Welcome to Love Mastery, formerly known as Real Love Real Stories, the podcast that dives head first into the tangled web of romance, where butterflies flutter and hearts skip a beat and unexpected connections spark like fireworks on a summer night. Join me as I unravel tales of serendipitous encounters and love's ability to triumph over all obstacles. I'm your girl, Canoe. I'm the host and producer of the show. I'm a therapist by training turned love guru. So get comfortable and let the magic unfold. Love is in the air and I can't wait to share it with you. Let's dive right in. Looking for top-notch talent to take your company to the next level? Look no further than Candle Consulting Group, the premier recruiting company that specializes in finding the best and brightest professionals for our clients. At Candle Consulting Group, we understand that the success of your business depends on the quality of your team. That's why we're committed to finding the perfect candidates to fill your open positions. With our extensive network and proven recruitment strategies, we have a track record of placing top-performing professionals in a variety of industries. We work closely with our clients to understand their unique needs and company culture, allowing us to identify candidates who not only have the right skills and experience, but also fit seamlessly into your team. We pride ourselves on our personalized approach to recruitment, taking the time to get to know both our clients and candidates on a deeper level. So if you're looking for the best and brightest talent to join your team, trust the experts at Candle Consulting Group. Contact us today to learn more about our recruitment services and how we can help take your business to the next level. CandleConsulting.net Hello, hello, this is your girl, Canoe, coming to you with a special episode. So let me give you a little bit of context. So a few weeks ago, I went on vacation with my family, sisters, nieces, cousins and stuff. So we went to, um, it was a girl's trip, we went to the Bahamas. First time being there, we had such a great time. So on my way back, I'm sitting at the airport So I have it in me that when I'm sitting at the airport or wherever I am, if there's a stranger nearby, I am going to try and strike conversation. So that day was no different than what I just explained. I am talking to a perfect stranger. So we got to be talking about, you know, how the vacation was and this and that. And somehow the conversation led to me talking about the podcast and sort of the things that I do around matchmaking and also the things that I do around uh, coaching people to be able to find love. So this guy, he was so excited to then tell me about his own personal things that he's going through. Um, And he was seeking my, my advice while we're sitting at the airport. So I will let you know that I answered his question a little bit while we're sitting at the airport, but I also said, I would like to think about it a little more and then give you a better answer. So I asked him, I said, do you mind emailing me your question? And also, do you mind if I create an episode around that in case somebody out there is experiencing the same thing? So my friend, you're listening to the episode where I am going to read you what the guy wrote to me. And also, I am going to share um, what I think in regards to what he is um, seeking advice on. So let's just start by getting into his letter. And by the way, I changed his name and I am calling him Norman, but that's not his real name. So throughout the episode, I'll be referring to him as Norman. So dear Canoe, I hope this letter finds you well. My name is Norman. Remember me? Since meeting you, I have listened to a few of your podcast episodes and as mentioned, when I met you in Nassau, I am I'm writing to seek your advice on a personal matter that has been on my mind lately. And I believe your insights could be truly valuable. I'm a 37-year-old male, and I find myself attracted to a wonderful 56-year-old woman from my local gym. We share the same values, have an incredible connection when we spend time together. What I appreciate most is the way she treats me with respect and her loyalty towards me. 
She seems to check off all the boxes for what I am looking for in a partner. However, the significant age gap between us is a concern that leaves me uncertain about our future together. While I cherish our time together and our mutual understanding, I can't help but wonder if this 19-year age gap might present challenges down the road. I value your expertise and perspective on relationships, and I am seeking guidance on whether I should embrace this connection or if the age gap, uh, the difference, is significant enough to make me consider running the other way. Any insights or advice you sh- you could share would be immensely helpful. I believe many of your listeners might benefit from hearing your thoughts on this matter as well. So thank you for your time and consideration. Looking forward to your response. Sincerely, Norman. Well, first of all, I am humbled that you went and looked up my podcast and have listened to some of the episodes, and I'm so grateful for that. So thank you for now being a listener. You went from a conversation sitting at that uh, gate in Nassau while waiting for our flight to now you sending me this email and also now you being a listener. So thank you, and I'm so grateful for that connection for sure. Okay, so the short answer, just like I taught when I were talking that day, I say to you, Straight out, if you have found somebody that checks all the boxes as you indicated in your email, then don't ignore it. I think there's love there. And there are so many people, celebrities even, and and regular people, average people like you and I, that are in significant age gap relationships, but somehow are making it work. So when I answer this, I'll be sharing with you some of the challenges and sort of things that you can do around some of those challenges, which, by the way, this could also apply to just any regular relationship. So, Norman, to answer your question, when you find love with somebody and they love you, you love them, I say go for it. Absolutely go for it because, you know, you can try to find love with people of your same age, but you're not going to find the love that you're going to get with this person as you described it. It sounds like it's a really good, rare to find kind of love. So why let it go just based on age gap? So however, if you decide to do that, and I'm sure as you have already started experiencing, they are some things that you're going to have to deal with. So let's dive into some of the unique challenges that can impact your relationship. Um, and by the way, while every relationship is different, here I am going to be sharing some of the common challenges that couples with a significant age gap difference may encounter. Okay, so number one, the generational differences. So couples such as yourself, uh, yourselves come from different generations and you have distinct cultural references, experiences, perspectives. And, you know, you were born in 1986 and she was born in 1967. So these differences can lead to difficulties in understanding each other, like your each other's values, your interests, your worldviews which may affect communication because communication, we all know, is the number one killer of all relationships. Um, so it can be impacted if you're not, you know, if you, if you don't work on it, if you don't do something about it. So just make sure that you understand each other and, and how you might navigate that in terms of communicating and in terms of how you can navigate the two different um, generations that you're, you're coming from. So the second thing that I think you might um, potentially, you know, face. So life stages and goals are definitely different. So she is nine years, according to my calculation, nine years closer to retirement while you are 28 years away. So you are probably focused on building a career and maybe even having a family, I'd imagine. And 
Now she's closer to retirement, and I'm not sure if you've talked about that, but that's something that we will discuss a little later in the episode, but something to definitely consider in terms of like where you are in life at your age and at her age. So differing goals and priorities can create tension and require compromise to ensure both partners, uh, the both partners needs are being met. Okay. So number three, social judgment and stigma. Ah, this one is a big one, right? So couples with this kind of an age gap may face judgment, criticism, or scrutiny from even family, from friends, from society. I mean, if you had been together at the airport, you know, people might assume that maybe she is your mom. Um, mind you, I don't know what race she is, so you know, this is, this is an assumption, but yeah, so society can be pretty, pretty tough. So you want to talk about it. So the two of you are on the same page, because if you're not on the same page, the external pressure can put strain on that relationship and cause emotional stress to both of you. So you want to talk about how you address, um, you know, the social judgment and the stigma. And how you can do that together as a couple. And then number four. So energy and health levels. So as individuals with such different ages, you know, as we age, and and this doesn't apply to everybody. This is just like a common when, you know, research was done and in the past and sort of like the history behind when we age our energy level goes down and also our health changes. So while you are younger, you might not be experiencing the same things that she might be experiencing. So as individuals age, there can be the differences in physical health and in energy levels. So one partner may be more active and have higher energy while the other may experience age-related health issues or even require more rest and care. So balancing these differences can be challenging and may, imp- you know, may impact shared activities and intimacy. So sounds like you, you know, for you, you were just coming from the Bahamas. You said you guys were doing all kinds of water fun activities and stuff. I don't remember exactly why she wasn't there with you, but you know, it sounds like you're pretty high energy. So I wonder if her high energy matches you, her energy matches yours. Now, this is not to say that couples should do the same things. Now, if you decide to do what you did, where you took a trip to another country to go hang out with your friends and have fun, and then you come back to her, that's super healthy. And then she can go with her friends and go somewhere else and do something fun. And then you come together. So as long as you talk about those things, as long as you come up with an agreement, as long as you come up with a good plan, so you're not deprived of of doing the things you like, and she's not deprived of doing the things that she likes. So talking about it and doing what you guys did, which I really loved. I remember you sharing that you do travel with your friends and she stays home. So. Yeah. Okay. So number five, family and social circle. So I already started kind of talking about this earlier. So families can be a really big thing to couples, especially if the family is not approving of your partner and they want you to find somebody who is closer in age. They want you to find somebody who, you know, who is of your age and, and, and all that. So with that age gap difference, I don't remember what you said in terms of like how old your parents are. So oftentimes we find that, you know, partners where there's an age gap difference like yours, that your parents might be closer in age to the person that you are falling in love with. And that might cause a lot of stress to your parents um, that you're bringing somebody who's from their generation to be a partner and you're since you're so young. So it's not to deter you or anything, but I'm just saying like, you know, talk about it. Talk to your family, help them understand that this person you are in love with and what what are the reasons why you love this person. And, 
you know, and maybe slowly bring her to meet the family so that they can get to know her the way that you know her. Um, but I think that eventually it'll work just fine. So in my own family, we have one of my, um, I wouldn't say what kind of a relationship, but anyway, this person, um, got into a, a similar situation like yours and she ended up getting marrying this guy who's much, much older than she is. So I will say that the family struggled at first. Like, why would she be with this guy? You know, there's so many guys that she can be with. Like, you know, we all wanted the best for her. But in the end, people got to meet him, got to know him. And then we realized that what the best that we want for her is for her to be in love and happy. And that's what she's getting from this relationship. So it is doable. You just need to give your family time. You need to give them the space and allow them to see what a wonderful person she is the same way that you see her. So, okay, despite these challenges, it's important to note that couples uh, such as yourself with a significant age gap can have successful and fulfilling relationships. I know a lot of my friends who are in significant age gap relationships. And um, I will say that mostly I see it more in the woman is younger and the male is older. Yours is flipped where the male is younger and the woman is older. So it's unique, but still it can work. So open and honest communication, mutual respect, understanding, and willingness to address and work through the challenges can contribute to a strong and healthy partnership. So Norman, those are the five things I wanted to share with you. I am so excited for you. I cannot wait to see where your relationship goes. And I would like to stay in touch with you so I can, you know, get to know what's what's happening in your in your relationship. So anyways, thank you so much for your question. Hopefully that helps you. Um, and yeah, I want to recommend people because this was really fun actually to be able to get a letter and then respond to it. So if you have a question, a dear canoe letter, please send it to me. Um, you can find the email address and stuff on my website. And then I would love to respond to your questions, just like I'm doing this one for Norman. So thank you so much for listening. Hopefully that was helpful. Love always. Hi there, it's your girl Canoe. You made it all the way to the end. I'm so grateful. So think about one or two people that you may forward this episode to so they can listen as well. And then go over to iTunes where you can rate and review this podcast. Till next time, love always.